obviously, the, the, there are aspects that have gone terribly wrong because it's you know it's probably the single single disaster since World War II mm -hmm. on British soil, um, and so we weren't ready for it. It took us by it took them by surprise. You've been dealing with this pretty much every day on the radio. Yes. What's y what's your take on this effort? I think that um, the politicisation of it is appalling. We have incredibly brave, hard-working people trying to find sadly, and I'm sorry if it upsets this, is what traces they can of the people who perished there. So trying to score political points is not right. However, Mrs May finds herself in a very difficult situation because if we look at past tragedies, and we must tread carefully because there are now charges, but a lot of the Thatcher government, the way it responded to the Hillsborough tragedy, it marked or it coloured how everybody viewed that government because, let's be polite, it was fairly inept. She is at a real turning point now. This is a woman who sought to make that assurance that you've just played out on television. The, literally, the hours are running down. And it seems very strange to me, again, without scoring points, but she was able to do a deal with the DUP for a billion pounds in, I think, about 12 days. She hasn't been able to house these, house these people. And my listeners and your viewers think this is wholly unfair. If this was happening, if there'd been a giant earthquake in Italy mm -hmm. and people were sleeping in the streets under plastic sheets, because Britain is such a generous country, we would be raising millions. Mm. If it was in Ethiopia and it was, it was camps, we would be spending millions to ensure... Why can we not do for our own so in West London? One point, though, is that, quite rightly, this community wants to stay yes. as close together as possible. There are schools, so you have to be within the catchment area of that school. There are, there are doctors, and there, we, we've met people who, who jobs. were on... Jobs, yeah, so, absolutely, the whole network. But we, you know that part of London. There's yep. not a lot of space. Well, so where, would you, where, do, where does everybody first go? Of all, there is a lot of funding available. There's been a lot of donations. They can be used to buy properties in that area and put those residents in there. You know, these people are traumatised and they need to be in their environment. They, the children especially, imagine, they need continuity. They need to be in their in their. In and the in problem the is community. what seems extraordinary with this situation is that for you, absolutely, there's a solution, but it seems that it's the people on the ground that are coming up with these solutions, that are going to the government for help, reaching out to them. It should be the other way around, shouldn't it? Well, it should, but you, you asked, you know, really... Everything has gone wrong. Nothing has gone right for these poor people. Mm. From the fact that we've just seen the leader of the local council step down, he has obviously accepted that the initial response wasn't good enough. It wasn't, yeah, you know, wasn't orchestrated correctly. Su support wasn't given. The outpouring from people has been phenomenal. Mm. Where the failure is, it seems at both local and central government level. And I say again that the time is ticking for them to get this right. It is wholly unacceptable that folk like this and others are treated in this way. This is Britain in 2017. Mm. There, um, there are a couple of points I just wanted to put with you. Sure. You've got to, obviously, you've got to play devil's advocate a little bit in a, in a situation like this. A group called BME Lawyers, yep. it's an ethnic minority lawyers for Grenfell, uh, wrote to Theresa May to say her selection of Sir Martin, this is Sir Martin Morpick, Moore, who's the, the judge who's going to lead the inquiry. Uh, his, uh, his selection was astonishing uh, in relation to appointing him. And, uh, and also uh, David Lammy, the MP, has said uh, that a white upper middle class man who has never spent a night in a tower block, let alone visit one, has been picked to lead the investigation. Now, in your professional view, mm -hmm. when we have a public inquiry, say, into a terrible train crash, the judge doesn't have to have been no. in a train crash to no. be able to head that inquiry no, up. No, I, I do think... I mean, this is a man who's very, very distinguished. Where I think there has been an error is that initially the survivors were told they would have input as to the appointment of who would head the inquiry and what its remit would be. That has... It's just been handed to them as a fait accompli, so that, I would say, is a mistake. But just as if I have to go to hospital today, I'm not going to demand a white surgeon or I'm not going to demand a black surgeon I will ha or a mixed race, I will have whatever surgeon comes my way. So justice has to be blind. If this person is deemed, and he's got a long track record, he's a very respectable Expected judge. If this person is deemed to be the right person, we should keep faith with that. What would you like to see out of this inquiry? The thing is, if the scope of the inquiry was only going to be about the cladding and the start of the fire, we agree he would have been a great, you know, great choice. But actually, it's a much larger and deeper issue at stake here. The leading up to the um, fire, you know, all the policies and the decisions that were made that allowed this to happen. And you don't think he's qualified? Um, well, it's not that. It's not that I don't think he is qualified. It's more the case of the attitudes that have already been presented. So, mm. first of all, we were told that we would be consulted and we weren't. Yeah, and he did mistake. also that say... Mistake. But not only that, he did also say that he didn't feel, after having met residents, that his inquiry would be able to cover what we were asking. Mm. M bearing in mind that the terms of, res uh, re uh, reference, reference. Terms yep, of reference haven't even been 
confirmed yet. They haven't even been discussed or consulted upon. So how does he know that he's not able to fulfil our requests That's unless it's already been decided? It's not a great start, that, is it? I'm afraid not. As I no. said earlier, everything that could go wrong, in including the fire itself, has gone wrong, and that's why someone yeah. has to get a grip of this and provide support to these folks.